So signals. Signal is a function that conveys information about the behavior or attributes of some phenomenon. And so we're mostly going to be thinking about electrical signals like voltage and current and uh, mechanical signals like velocity uh, or force. So most of our signals are going to be varying in time, but technically you can have a signal that varies in another, in another sense. In, in fact, we'll also consider uh, what's called the frequency domain, and you could think of a signal as being uh, uh, a frequency domain signal as well. So instead of a function of time, it would be a function of frequency. We'll get there. It's Fourier. We got to start speaking French. It's really interesting because some things we totally just, is, is it anglicized, the French word? Like, I'm really surprised we don't say Fourier. We actually say Fourier. That's like a thing. Yeah. Go us. Um, let's see. So this is actually, you know, it seems like we only have seven minutes. How are we going to get through? There's really not a lot in this lecture. It's mostly introducing you to some different types of signals. So there are many types that we will be encountering in engineering analysis. Uh, it surveys a few of the most common. Many of our signals are functions of time and are presented as such, but it's also possible to have other independent variables for a signal. Uh, the primary distinction that we make among types of signals is between those that are periodic and those that are aperiodic. And we will have endless confusion about whether I say a periodic signal or an aperiodic signal. Yes, it's, it's going to be so hard not to, but. But we'll, we'll make it through. I will just enunciate very clearly. I've been complimented by an old lady about how well I enunciate. And I was like, thank you, old lady. <laughs> She's like, that was disrespectful. I was like, sorry, I didn't mean to enunciate so well on that one. Um, and that didn't happen. Well, the first part did. She was actually old, but she didn't compliment me. No, she did compliment me. That part was true, too. Okay. So the primary distinction is between periodic and aperiodic, and this is how we define it uh, in words. Periodic signals repeat. I know, that was hard. But if you want to do it mathematically, it's harder. So in maths, a signal V of t is periodic if for all t and for some big T here, so you've got to pay attention, which is a real number, this is true. So it seems kind of simple. Uh, it's periodic if, for all values of time, you can, for some value of big T, add uh, that value to it, and it'll be the same. The function will re return the same number. What's big T representing? Well, it's, we're going we're gonna to name that the period, um, which we haven't named it yet. but. Now, now that we've understood this, we say, if a function satisfies this, this condition, it is periodic with period t. Boom. There it is. Here, here's the first test. An aperiodic function is one that is not periodic. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So nice. I know. It was, I know you guys were surprised at that. Uh, sinusoidal signals are the first. So the familiar sine wave is the most popular periodic signal. So let A, omega, and phi be reals, okay? Meaning real numbers. A sinusoidal signal can be written V of t equals A sine omega t plus phi. That's all pretty familiar to us, right? We've seen that. Let uh, so we call A the amplitude, omega the angular frequency in radians per second, and phi the phase in radians. Uh, we define the cyclic frequency F in hertz to be omega over 2 pi. 
and the period to be 1 over f. So that's all stuff you've seen, but it's good to have it all in one place. Below is a sinusoidal signal with and without a phase shift phi. So the blue one doesn't have a phase shift, so it's just a good old-fashioned sine wave, right? And it has amplitude A, period T, and then uh, we have another one, which is the red one, that has a phase shift phi. So our phase shift is that distance. So between the blue sign, or the blue uh, sine wave, yeah, and the red sine wave, we have a phase shift phi. So for instance, cosine would be a 90 degree phase shift. And this looks a lot like a 90 degree phase shift to me, or a pi over 2 phase shift. And in fact, it is. That's what I plotted. It was a cosine. I don't know. <laughs> Clever I am, huh? I don't know if I wanted to hear that. I'm going to leave that one on the floor. I'm not going to pick it up. Oh, yeah. There you go. Well, we could, t we could talk about that. I was thinking something else. So let's talk about the three common types of amplitude for sinusoids. So there's good old-fashioned amplitude. And this is the amplitude we've described already. Have you guys heard of good old-fashioned things before? Yes. That is, yes, a good old-fashioned amplitude. Uh, and then there's the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude, which we will sometimes denote with a lower K or with a, a subscript PP. Um, and that's twice the good old-fashioned amplitude. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I decided to just go, because RMS uses an acronym, so I was like, I should try some. Um, these other two you don't see, P2P and, and GOFA. It seems that no matter how hard we try, we're never going to get rid of them gophas. Them gophas. Them gophas, yes, have been causing us some problems. The, the, at my house, though, it's the moles. Same. They, like, tear up my yard. And then the guy who takes them out, so expensive, and I'm not even totally sure how to verify that those moles come from my yard that he occasionally shows me. <laughs> so, <laughs> unclear. Very All I know is he rolls up in his Camry and he charges me a lot of money and I just pay him because my yard is getting torn up. What? You don't like what he does? Well, I mean, he comes by at random times and then like he's like, oh, you owe me 200 bucks. And I'm like, oh, I guess. I don't have any way of knowing, so I guess I trust you. Well, I don't know. Are you allowed to do that? Yeah. How do you do that? You go to Show me after to class. The depot and you buy the trap and stick it on the mole. Okay, I'll have to do that. Yeah. Well, first. Yeah, I heard that doesn't work. I know one of the most effective ways possible. What? We had a lady that was a neighbor. Oh, yeah. She I've, would get out I've used it on with yeah. shovel. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could just see that. Just <laughs> Obviously, you just get rid of your yard. Well, with the shovel, she would go ahead and kill the moles. Wow. Because yeah. if you move the top, then they have to come up to a parrot. Okay. So she'd do that with the shovel. And I just wait. Come back up to <laughs> You're sitting there in her lawn chairs with her shovel. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, okay. Okay. We gotta finish this up because you guys are supposed to be leaving. <laughs> Supposedly, we have other things to do in our lives. So, RMS voltage uh, or RMS uh, uh, of a signal is technically defined as this for any signal. But, for, so fortunately, for a sine wave, you could do this integral and discover that for time intervals that are multiples of a period, which is typically what you care about. The RMS value is just the good old-fashioned amplitude divided by the square root of 2. It's pretty easy. 
uh, you got to be careful to specify which is being used and be aware that in some instances it is assumed to be conventional, which it, it, it is assumed. And you're not, like, for instance, when you read the voltage off of some meters, it might not even tell you that it's RMS voltage, but it might just be the RMS voltage. So you got to be a little bit careful. Um, finally, a sinusoid's mean value is called the DC offset and is defined as the integral over a period divided by a period. So integrate over a period and divide it by that, that period and you have the, the average value, which is the DC offset. Many signals are approximately sinusoidal. For instance, AC electrical power is sinusoidal, as is the motion of a pendulum. So it comes up a lot. Um, I'm just going to, uh, I'll just continue Friday. We don't need to finish it. I, I could keep you guys an extra few minutes, but I already have, so we'll finish it up Friday. We had a good